But I think the New York Times put it nicely. People don't love their dogs any more or less because they live in one geographic region or another. But kill rates spike in high poverty areas with limited access to affordable veterinary services for spay and neuter. In the rural south, unsterilized dogs are often allowed to roam outdoors. Many counties have weak or unenforced leash laws. Shelters in such areas are overrun with kill rates ranging from 50 to 95%. Even when adoption is encouraged, low population density makes it rare. So this is why a lot of these dogs end up needing to find homes. They're put on trucks and they're shipped all over the country to areas where they might have effective spay and neuter programs or maybe more disposable income per capita where people can afford to get veterinary care for their dogs. Leash laws are more enforced up here. Um, I'm speaking specifically to Massachusetts, but in other areas around the country too. So when these dogs that need homes are shipped um, with the intention of trying to save these dogs, many of them go on to be fantastic family pets. Many of them end up being uh, joys and gems and a perfect uh, addition to a family. But if care isn't taken, and the desperation of sending dogs out on a, in some cases, a traumatic transport. And the first person that this pet sees is the, you know, like from the parking lot and they're pulling the dog out and putting it in their hatchback to drive into a densely populated city like Boston and moving to a high rise from a, maybe a rural area in the South that can lead to significant problems. And that's where it impacts my life as a dog trainer and as a behavior consultant. That's where it really affects um, my friends who are veterinarians. And that's where it affects families. And if problems do arise with a good breeder, we would always recommend that you find a breeder that will take the dog back in case life circumstances get in the way. If something were to go horribly wrong, if you were to lose your job and you might have to give up your pet, that a good breeder would take that dog back and not judge you. The same recommendation is made for a good rescue organization. Um, and so when we're looking at um, these dogs that are coming up, um, from my region, it tends to be predominantly from the South, but they can be coming from anywhere. Um, I want you guys to run a little experiment. The next five dogs you see on walks from a socially distant area, or if you're on a Zoom call and you see dogs um, in the background of these Zoom calls, you can ask, like, where is your dog from? Um, and my guess is that most of them are going to be Oh, yeah, he's from North Carolina. He's from Georgia. He's from Texas. He's from Tennessee. She's from Florida. Um, or she's from Northeast Animal Shelter. Um, she's from Animal Rescue League. You'll hear like either a specific shelter or rescue, or you will hear the state or or country that the dog originated from. And I would be curious to see um, how many of them are more local. Um, some of the things that we have heard here, um, the Massachusetts Vet Tech Association, when I asked them while I was giving a longer version of this conversation of this presentation, I was like, hey, guys, um, how many of you guys today saw a dog that an owner had picked up over state lines skirting the the rules here in Massachusetts? And they all raised their hand. And I kept asking and everybody had at least three or more dogs. One woman had seven um, from just one shift that were from out of state pickups. So how does this happen? So if uh, you see a couple of red flags here, these are, uh, one is from Pet Finder and one is from Adopt-A-Pet. The first one on the left, um, a pro tip if you are looking for a rescue dog, if the rescue cannot spell the name of the town that they are fake operating out of, they are probably not here. Somerville, if you can see, you probably can't, my cursor's moving. Um, Somerville, Massachusetts is spelled with one M. Um, and if a dog is listed in multiple cities with different names, it's probably not an ethical rescue. Um, so if you think about puppy mill sales, like you might see, like, um, I've had photographer friends who have had their pictures of pets stolen and put up on like puppyfind.com, which is a website where you can buy a purebred puppy. Um, so you can find really great photography and some of those um, are legitimately selling a dog that they are advertising that they are selling but the 
other darker side of it is that photographers have their images stolen and are used to sell puppies as product. Um, so in this case, we have Rhonda, super sweet and laid back, and then Donna, super sweet and laid back. Um, and then from Adopt-A-Pet, she's under Abilina. Um, none of these dogs are here in Somerville, Massachusetts. You can see here she's Rhonda when she's in Jersey, Vill Jersey Village, Texas. And over here, she's Cambridge, Massachusetts. Um, that dog, if I recall, was in Texas at the time that I took this um, screenshot several years ago. Um, I would also like to suggest, uh, to just put this out there, I have had students who have gone in to adopt and pay for Abilina, a dog like her, that's my dog, great. And then they send the dog on a truck, the family gets there and then they're given Arthur, they're given a different dog. And the excuse that's usually given is, oh, well, Abilina couldn't make it. You know, she was really sick or something happened or she didn't make the truck or she got spayed. I'm sorry I didn't tell you, but you know, Arthur's here and Arthur's a great dog and you're gonna love Arthur. What had happened more likely than not is Abilina was probably sold as Rhonda in Jersey Village, Texas. Then the transport left and they put Arthur on the transport and then the family that went to go pick up Abilina, thinking that was the dog they were gonna get, was handed a dog like Arthur. So if they're gonna do the old switcheroo on you, that's a red flag too. Um, and then you're standing there in a parking lot with a dog who needs you now and you feel like you might not have any recourse. The emotional stakes are pretty high and if you've already committed to saving a dog and that's what you're trying to do, you can get fleeced and that's not fair, um, especially since you haven't met either of these dogs. You had not met Abilina and you hadn't met Arthur. So when I'm talking to families about looking for um, a, a good rescue or a good shelter um, that will work with them for their environment. So I tend to work in urban environments. I live just outside of Boston. A um, couple things to keep in mind, if you're sending a dog with sound sensitivity into an apartment or into a condo or next to a highway um, or into a city in general, that's asking a lot for that dog because the soundscape is so busy all the time and it's not like you can just turn it off. Um, so for sound sensitive dogs living in the city, this can be a nightmare. So for somebody who's trying to save a dog and bring a dog home, if that dog is already kind of skittish around sounds, please don't send that dog into the city. Um, and that's to the people who are, uh, the rescue organizations who are um, selling dogs. Um, if it feels pushy or like a sales pitch, just like breeders, walk away. Um, those are people who are not really particularly worried about the overall welfare of the dog and they're they might be more interested in making a sale. Language like she'll be gone tomorrow. Again, these are people who are not interested in matching you to the right dog for your family. They are more interested in moving dogs out. This is a lot more risky. It might work, it might not work, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Um, if you're working with a rescue, a breeder, or a shelter that is ducking a legal loophole like the Massachusetts state law that says that the dogs have to be here until proven behaviorally or physically sound for adoption, um, I would really, really, really advise that you don't follow through with that sale or that purchase or that rescue or that breeder or that shelter. Um, I think if there is going to be a problem, these are the people who are going to change their number and you're never gonna be able to hear from them again or they're gonna give you a runaround if you were told that that dog was spayed or neutered and then you find out that they weren't and then you're on the hook for, if it's a female, if it's a large female dog, you're on the hook for a $500 spay. Um, that's a huge red flag to me. If they know the rules and they're ducking it. Um, if it's an urban dog, again, look at urban shelters or urban rescues. So this way you can see how the dog does with bicycles and traffic noises and kids and, and squealing brakes and trash day. And never, ever, 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 ever adopt a dog off of a truck sight unseen. 
And I think that goes back to the common ground between rescues and breeders and shelters. No matter how you acquire your dog, check with the Better Business Bureau just to make sure that that company is on the up and up. Um, if they are saying that they're a 501c3, a, a not-for-profit organization, verify it. Um, make sure that they're not shipping a dog to you unless you have physically and personally met the dog and you are willing to travel with the dog. If you as a consumer love that golden retriever puppy so much that you are willing to drive across the country to get it and meet it, do it. But if you're not willing or financially able to do that, then shop local. Pay attention to other dogs on the site. If you're there at the kennel or at the shelter or working with a rescue organization, if you are noticing that the dogs are sick or unhealthy, um, is there a lot of coughing? Is there some sensitivity? Um, if it's not right, it's okay. If you are worried about the dogs, the safety, the health of those dogs on site, go ahead and contact the Humane Society, the Animal Rescue League, Animal Control, or the police. Report it, report it, report it. If they go and they check up on it and there is really nothing to be concerned about, it's okay. But if they do discover what your eyewitness testimony can provide is uh, is dangerous to the dogs or is uh, there are unhealthy dogs or there's malnutrition or there's something else going on, you could have actually helped a lot of dogs going forward. So if it doesn't feel right, definitely make that call. You're not a narc. You're not doing a bad thing. Just make the call and let the... Uh, experts handle it. You can also visit dogmerchants.com. It's basically a Yelp for dog sales. So if you've seen people who've had a great experience or a not great experience, you'll see how they're listed on Yelp. Um, and again, um, in the UK, there's a uh, hashtag where's mum, and that's a, a way to get around puppy sales, uh, puppy mill sales, that people will drive around with puppy mill dogs or, or um, commercially bred dogs and drive around and say, oh, I just found this litter of puppies. If you know, I could take them to the shelter, but I think I'll sell them to you. You're supposed to ask, where's the mom? Where's the mother dog? Um, and hopefully this will help curb some of these um, uh, unscrupulous sellers from selling dogs legally. And the thing that I had talked about several years ago was called hands-on first, meeting the dogs first uh, before making a sale. Um, something else to consider here too regarding like where's mom and hands-on first. The book, The Dog Merchants, written by uh, journalist Kim Caven. Um, if you've ever looked at a dog and loved dogs, you've got to read this book. It is so eye-opening. And these, um, these, dogs that you see that are being sold in places like pet stores, um, even sold as rescues, are often coming from the same place as commercially bred dogs. Um, so it does make sure, uh, it does make sense for you to check, to verify. Um, if it doesn't feel right, don't go ahead with the sale um, and make sure that there's support on the other end. I always advocate for people to shop local. Um, if dogs are trucked in from the south, I would highly um, encourage you to pick that dog up at a local place, like the Animal Rescue League of Boston. They will take dogs in that have been transported from places that need help. They are then um, health checked, vet checked, behaviorally checked by their behavior team, and then matched appropriately to you. And if it doesn't work out, you have recourse. You can take that dog back and say, look, you know what? You said that this dog was good with kids. I feel nervous around this dog with my children. Um, and then you can bring that dog back, no questions asked, and they will continue working with you to find the right pet for you. Um, I think that is a much better way, a much safer way for people to acquire pets than to purchase one sight unseen on the internet, regardless if it's from a breeder or from a rescue or from a shelter. So the way that Pet Finder looks now looks a little bit different than the images that I had shown earlier in this presentation. Um, but I thought that it was more clear to see um, where the dogs were coming from, because in the older version of this, you could see, like right here, it says Betsy Senior Poodle One Mile Away, this first dog. Um, but it would also tell you the town they were in and what the rescue organization was. Um, here, they're no longer even giving you that information. They are not telling you what rescue organization there is right on the front page. You have to click into the dog to get more information, which I think from a consumer standpoint, that's a little... 
um, from a professional standpoint, maybe I should say not a consumer. Um, as a consumer, if let's say you liked Anna Kiri and you clicked into her, you're going to get all of this information, which is great. It's an Alaskan Malamute from Cambridge, Massachusetts. Um, sweet and playful. It seems like this is a really good idea. But then you get all the way here. It says Rocio's Rescues, Cambridge. And then you click in here, more about Rocio's Rescues. Um, and then it tells you that they are actually in Houston. Um, so again, this is just a little bit more of same old, same old. It's just a little harder to navigate or at least weed out from the main page. And so what I had done was I had gone through before recording and I had pulled out a couple of dogs from the first page. The first one here is Carl. Carl is a Labrador retriever pointer mix out of Charlestown, Massachusetts. So Charlestown is the other neighboring city of Somerville. Um, this is where um, the USS Constitution is docked and Bunker Hill. So like this is a really busy um, neighborhood of Boston. It's actually one of my favorite places to walk. Um, but I can tell you that Somerville Rescue is not in Charlestown, Massachusetts. It says it's right here by Bunker Hill Monument. But when you click in, and I think this is probably one of this, the shadier ones, about Somerville Rescue, they're in Somerville, Texas. They're not here. So if you had fallen in love with this dog named Carl, right? And then you decide, I'm going to bring him home. I'm going to drive over to Charlestown to meet him. You're not going to be able to see this dog. Um, let's see. After having no interest at a local high kill shelter scheduled for euthanasia, brought to our attention, and they scooped him up. So emotionally, they're getting you right here. He's so sweet, happy, playful, do great with an active family. Um, and what's really hard here, so the ground transport is included in the adoption fee of $575. So let's say you just read this and you love this, and it says he's good in a home with other dogs and children. Um, but what if he's not good with your children? Um, or what if he's too big? Or what if he's too small? Um, what if he isn't good with children and you don't know that? Uh, maybe he's great with children if he's here in the middle of a field, but if he's in a small one-room apartment with two children in Boston with noise all the time. Maybe this dog would be too stressed out to live in a city and you do not know until you meet the dog first. Um, so that is what I would like to caution you guys about. Just do your due diligence, dig a little deeper. This was the other one that I saw. He was here on the front page. This is Oliver. Um, and Oliver um, was one of the ones, let's see, how far down was he? He was about halfway down on the first page. This is Oliver. Chihuahua mix senior two miles away. So a senior deaf dog, um, good in a home with other dogs, cats, and children. And I think that that might be a little irresponsible to just say that a dog who can't hear you would be great with a home with children. So if I didn't know any better and I saw, oh my God, this poor dog, this poor deaf dog, um, he's eight, um, he might be he might start to have arthritis you would definitely want to have a veterinarian check him out um he can't be left outside alone without supervision i would hope he wasn't left alone outside without supervision um he was abandoned and left to fend for himself which is horrible um like again like these dogs they definitely need homes um he needs to go with a single person or a couple no little children as you can't surprise him but up here it says good in a home with other dogs cats and children so they're giving conflicting information about him. And then when you click in here to more about Save Our Strays in Sugarland in Boston, two guesses where they are. If you guess Texas, ding, 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 you're correct. So please, if you guys are using Pet Finder to find a dog um, of the first page, I think there were 48 dogs on the first page, about 50. Um, and I went through and the only two that are confirmed to be legitimately within a mile of Somerville, Massachusetts is here. Betsy and Winter are both from Poodle Rescue and that is a legitimate um, organization that is about a mile away. Um, and that they are local and I could meet these two dogs. All of the other dogs on this page, I would not be able to meet. 
it's not until a little bit later in the search. So if I'm scrolling, um, I can't even see if these dogs are from the MSPCA or from, um, from the Animal Rescue League. So the better thing to do is let's say you know that there's a reputable organization in the area. I'm going to do MSPCA.org. I Full disclosure, I work for the MSPCA, so I know that they have uh, trainers on staff, behavior help um, available, they'll take the animal back, the animals are fully vetted. Um, so let's say I wanted to see um, which animals are available. I'm gonna look at Nevin's farm because that's where I work. And I'm actually just curious to see who's around. <laughs> um, so I can look here, uh, see view our adoptable animals, search pets. So go to the website of the place that you're um, curious about. And let's say from here, I wanted to look at dogs. I can search for dogs here and they do use Pet Finder to, um, to promote their animals as they should. And I guess there are no dogs available. This is amazing. Um, but let's say um, I wanted to find um, few adoptable animals. Let's look, they might not have dogs, which is fine. Let's look at cats. Let's see if I can maybe find a cat. Cause like this, the way that I would advise you to search would be the same. So let's look at cats through mspca.org. Okay, so let's see, we've got Muffy, Gizmo, Addie, and Sebastian. Let's look at Gizmo. I used to have a kitty named Gizmo when I was a kid. Um, so from here, I could look at this, at the, dog, the cat is 11 years old, more about me. And then if I wanted to see more adoptable animals, um, back to adoption search, I could just search here. Now let's say I wanted to look up at Northeast, animal shelter, right? Northeast Animal Shelter, meet our dogs. So this is another organization in Massachusetts that has a brick and mortar facility that I could conceivably go to or at least work with somebody virtually to try to find the right match for me. And they do have some pets and some of these pets have been transported in. So I could look here um, and let's say I'm gonna look, oh my gosh, Betsy. Betsy, let's be friends. So let's learn about Betsy. So I can look here and find out about her through the shelter webpage. Um, I think that's probably a better way to go than to just go straight to Pet Finder unless petfinder.com. There should be a way that you can actually look um, for an organization within the Pet Finder website. And so let's see if I typed in MSPCA and see what comes up. And this is the first time I'm doing this. So you're seeing exactly what I'm seeing. Uh, let's see search results, fostering. Okay. So I don't see find a pet. Can I look for find other pets? No, I want to find a dog. So it is, it does appear that it's a little harder to maybe find a dog from, um, oh, from a shelter or rescue, search the organization name. Okay, let's do um, Animal Rescue League Boston. No shelters found. MSPCA, Boston, Cape Cod, and Methuen. Let's look up at Methuen. Again, that's the one that I work. So you can actually look to see if they have any animals. They don't appear to. Maybe I'll add MSPCA here. Nope, these are all the recently viewed and Cape Cod. So it doesn't appear that MSPCA has any pets. Again, these were all the ones that I was viewing earlier. So that's why I'm saying that they don't have them. They're under recently viewed. Oh, wait, finding pets for you. Oh, here we go. So we have a few here. Um, so I could click in here to Peony. Oh, but wait, this is not from the MSPCA. This is one of the dogs that I was looking at on the front page. And it says that she's a mile away. She's in Cambridge, Massachusetts, but I know this rescue organization, Rocio's Rescues is actually in Houston, Texas. So even when you type in and this is really disappointing. Even if you're typing in the rescue organization name into Pet Finder, you might be shown dogs that aren't at the rescue organization that you are 
um, hoping to find. Um, so no search results. So here you go. So just be really careful. Um, again, I would just go to the rescue organization directly. And if they're using Pet Finder, you can search um, for that animal directly through their site instead of going through Pet Finder or Adopt-a-Pet or anything like that until we can get better information and more accurate information. And that's not to say that dogs that are shipped up are bad. I would never say that. Um, I will say though, that when things tend to go wrong, um, the worst stories I hear are the people who purchased a dog sight unseen. And that just sets you up to be taken advantage of. And it sets you up to be paired with a dog that either you didn't sign up for um, or somebody's just gonna take your money and you're going to end up with a dog that you're going to have to put a lot of money into behavior resources and medication and all sorts of things that are really hard. That is a, a much more likely occurrence if you have not met the dog first. And I would also argue that also happens with purebred dogs or designer bred dogs if you are purchasing them sight unseen. Um, I'm just gonna try one more. I'm gonna try New England Brittany Rescue. Yay. So if you do type in New England Brittany Rescue, you are able to find some dogs. So either go directly to the site. If you know of reputable rescues, you can type it into Pet Finder but do not rely on just their search um, because those dogs might not be here. Um, I wanted to thank you for spending the afternoon listening to me babble about this. If you have questions or concerns about getting an adoptable pet or even a purebred pet and you're trying to find reputable and responsible people to get those pets from, especially if you're here in the age of COVID, I would certainly advise you guys to also listen to um, trainers who have spoken about what it's like to have a COVID puppy or what you would like, um, what we would beg you to consider before bringing a pet home now that you're home now, but if you lose your job, do you have resources to continue taking care of that pet? If you get to go back to work in three or four weeks, what's going to happen to that pet? So this is something that trainers are concerned about, and we would advise you to really weigh those considerations um, heavily and really think about it. Um, I have given another uh, quick talk on socializing, socializing a puppy and how to get a puppy um, at when this first started. Um, and maybe some of the information in there has changed over time because now we can't go and meet dogs in person, maybe, um, if you're depending on where you are in the country. Um, but it is important to at least know um, what it is that you're getting into and what that might look like. Uh, what that might look like going forward. Um, you can contact me at Muttstuff on Twitter or uh, Considerations for the City Dog on Facebook. Um, it's a Facebook page. I also have a collaborative page at Muttstuff, uh, the Facebook page. It's a group, uh, Muttstuff. My, uh, my Instagram is Melissa McHugh McGrath and my email is Book at gmail.com. And again, my name is Melissa McHugh McGrath. I'm a certified professional dog trainer, presenter, and author of the book Considerations for the City Dog. Thank you for joining me today.